In this video, we are going to talk about how to import CAD models into Sim Mechanics for simulations. Specifically, we will talk about how to identify different CAD import workflows, visualize bodies with CAD geometries, exporting from CAD software, importing into Sim Mechanics, and finally, some notes on CAD features that are captured by the CAD import. In the previous videos, we created a suspension assembly using Sim Mechanics. Sim Mechanics allows us to create our own custom components. However, mechanical systems are commonly designed using computer aided design or CAD software. We can automatically generate readable Sim Mechanics block diagrams from CAD models. This allows us to leverage MathWorks products to do various things with an existing CAD model such as data logging and analysis, dynamic simulation, control design, parameter optimization, automatic C, C++ code generation, etc. In this video, we will import a suspension assembly from a SOLIDWORKS model instead of creating it in Sim Mechanics. There are two CAD import workflows that could be of interest to us. Importing individual parts. Here, we already have a Sim Mechanics model and would like to import an individual CAD part to enhance our existing Sim Mechanics model. Secondly, importing assemblies. In this case, we import the entire assembly from the CAD software, including degrees of freedom, inertia properties, etc. Let's take a look at importing individual parts first. With most CAD platforms, we can save each part in our CAD model as a step or an STL file. This allows us to use these files to define solid geometries in some mechanics. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how we can do this. Let's take a look at an example part in SOLIDWORKS. Here, we see a wheel hub. Note that in our previous videos, the Sim Mechanics representation of our suspension system did not include a wheel hub component. Suppose that we have an existing CAD model for a component like the wheel hub here and would like to import it into Sim Mechanics to integrate it with the rest of our existing Sim Mechanics model. We can save a part as a step file by going to File, Save As, for save as type, let's use the step type. Here we will use the step AP214 as it is considered an extension of the AP203 format. And let's just save this file. Let's go back to MATLAB. Here we have a step file of the VLAB component. To use this geometry in some mechanics, we will use the solid block. Let's open up a new template sim mechanics model by using the command sm new. In this model, let's double click on the solid block to access its parameters. Now, we can go to shape properties and choose from file option. The available options here are STL or step. Our file is of type step, so let's choose that. We are using the step file because it gives us an option to automatically calculate inertia parameters from the geometry. Now to specify the file, click on the file name option and click on this button here. In the file browser, let's choose our step file, in this case it's wheelhub.step and select open. So we can see the step file here. Let's update the visualization by clicking on this button here and fit the model to view by clicking on this button. We can see the CAD part now. This is one way to reuse and import CAD geometries. We can now extend to use this solid as any other sim mechanics component, create frames, degrees of freedom, etc. to integrate with the existing sim mechanics models. However, there are a few things to keep in mind while using this approach. The from file shape only affects how a solid is visualized in the Mechanics Explorer. 
we will need to manually enter the units, inertia properties and visual properties within the solid block to match up with the original CAD model. Also, the workflow works only for individual parts. In a CAD assembly, all the degrees of freedom have to be entered using joints and constraints and all the body interfaces have to be defined using the rigid transform blocks. We have talked about these concepts in the Building Mechanical Assemblies Part 1 and 2 training videos. This is the method that should be used to import individual parts to integrate with the rest of our system already created in some mechanics. We can see that it has its limitations. To overcome these, we will use the Sim Mechanics Link add-on software. Let's switch to the presentation. Sim Mechanics Link is an add-on that automatically converts a CAD assembly into a Sim Mechanics block diagram. We can download and access documentation for the Sim Mechanics Link product from the MathWorks website. A link for this has also been provided in the resources section. The CAD platforms supported in Sim Mechanics Link are Autodesk Inventor, PTC Creo, and SolidWorks. The workflow for using Sim Mechanics Link is as follows Install Sim Mechanics Link, Register Sim Mechanics Link with supported CAD software, Export a CAD model into XML and graphics files. Import the XML file into Sim Mechanics. Steps 1, 2, and 3 require CAD software to be installed on our machine. Please refer to the documentation links in the resources section for steps 1 and 2. In this video, we will explore steps 3 and 4. Namely, we will export a CAD model into XML and graphics files and import an XML file created from SolidWorks. Let's switch to MATLAB to see how we can do this. In SOLIDWORKS, let's open up our assembly, suspensionassembly.sldasm. We can see the entire right wheel suspension assembly, including the wheel hub part. Let's switch to the right view. We can move the components to see the constraints implemented as different mates in SOLIDWORKS. After installing Sim Mechanics Link, we can register it to appear as an add-on in our CAD software. For example, in SOLIDWORKS, we can see this Sim Mechanics Link menu here. The Sim Mechanics Link documentation describes the registration steps for each of the three supported target platforms. We can export this assembly by selecting the Sim Mechanics Link menu, going to Export, and choose Sim Mechanics Second Generation. Here, we can specify a valid XML file name. In this case, we are going to leave it at suspensionassembly.xml, and then click on the Save button. The tool loops through the various parts to create the necessary export files. Finally, we get the message that says the export is complete. Let's click OK and go back to MATLAB. After exporting the assembly, we can see the following files are generated. One step graphics file per rigid part in the model. We can also change the settings to output STL files instead if that is what is desired and one XML file which contains information such as units, coordinate transforms, constraints, inertial properties, part colors, etc. So this is the first step, exporting from the CAD platform. The next step is to import this XML file into Sim Mechanics. To do this, we can use the sm import command. This function takes the name of the exported XML file as the input. So in this case, we will use suspension assembly.xml. Let's execute the command by hitting enter. The XML file is parsed to create a Sim Mechanics block diagram of the same name as the XML file. 
Note that only a subset of CAD constraints can be translated. If SM import is unable to translate a CAD constraint, it will assume a rigid connection. When this occurs, a warning will be output to the MATLAB command window. Please refer to the resources section to get more information about the supported constraints for each of the CAD platforms. For our example, there are no warnings, so that means all our constraints were successfully imported. Let's go back to our model and update it using our shortcut control D. This brings up the mechanics explorer. Let's switch to the isometric view. We see our assembly with all the parts in their respective colors. Let's go back to the model. Here we see the three essential blocks used in every sim mechanics model. We also see our different subsystems. Let's go inside one of these subsystems, for example the wheel hub subsystem, and double click on the solid block. Here we see the generated step file being used in the geometry properties. We can also check out the inertia properties which were automatically imported. In addition to this, under graphics, we can see the appropriate colors are being used to display the part. Let's go back to the top level of the model. The other important thing is that the CAD constraints in our assembly have been translated into SIM Mechanics joint blocks. For example, we see the revolute joint between chassis and the arm 1. Note also that there are a few cylindrical joints in the model. These do not have any effect on the original constraints of our system in the CAD model. Because of the way these joints are connected, for all practical purposes they are just fundamental revolute and in the case of the connection between the cylinder and piston, it is prismatic. If we wanted the CAD import to automatically translate to fundamental revolute or prismatic joints, we might need to over-define our system in the CAD software. Over-defining a CAD system means that we specifically constrain each joint to a single degree of rotation or translation independent of the other joints. Let's go back to the Mechanics Explorer and simulate our model. We see an unexpected behavior. We expect the arms to extend under gravity like we saw in Building Mechanical Assemblies Part 2 training video. Instead, it goes all the way around. This means we have to modify the important model to get the expected results. For example, this behavior is because the gravity vector is not properly defined in the model. In our case, gravity should be in the negative z direction. Let's go back to our model and access the mechanism configuration block. Here we see the gravity is in the negative y direction, so let's change that by specifying gravity to be in the negative z direction. Select OK to save changes and let's go back to our mechanics explorer. Let's update our model and then simulate it again. Now we see the pendulum-like behavior. We have seen this before in Building Mechanical Assemblies Part 2 training video. This is because the joints are modeled in an ideal fashion and have no specification for stiffness or damping. Note that internal mechanical properties are not translatable by SIM Mechanics Link. So let's specify these parameters. These parameters are available as variables specified in the script suspension cat parameters. So let's go back to MATLAB, scroll up to find our script, right click on the script and execute it. Let's go to the workspace to see our stiffness and damping coefficients. We will use KS and DS as the internal mechanics parameters. So let's go back to our model. We would like to specify the internal mechanics parameter for the joint between the cylinder and the piston. And this is the cylindrical 2 joint. Here we would like to specify the internal mechanics parameters for the prismatic joint. 
So access the internal mechanics section and specify the stiffness as Ks and the damping as Ds. Select OK to save changes and let's go back to our mechanics explorer. Let's update our model again. Switch to the right view and then simulate it. Now we don't see the pendulum like behavior anymore. Instead, the suspension just rests under gravity. We can now add other components to this model, such as the external force test system that we implemented in the Building Mechanical Assemblies Part 2 training video. Let's go back to the presentation and do a small recap. We use SimMechanics link to export the CAD file into an XML file and a graphics file for every part in the assembly. The XML file has the information about units, coordinate transforms, constraints, inertial properties, and part colors. Individual graphics files control the visualization. If an unsupported CAD system is being used, we can use the API of that platform to generate an XML file. This XML file should be based on the schema available in the SimMechanics product page. Please refer to the resources section to get more information about this. We then use the SM import function to create a SimMechanics model. This function takes in the name of the XML file as input. We then updated the model and took a look at the Mechanics Explorer for the visualization. We also looked at the solid block in the imported model and saw the graphics files being used. Inertia parameters were imported and the visualization was updated. Note that importing from CAD will capture a subset of features that SimMechanics provides. Generally, SimMechanics link will account for graphical properties such as shape and units, inertial properties such as masses, inertia, etc., kinematics such as transforms, joints, and constraints of an assembly, and initial positions are translated but they may need to be modified. Initial velocities need to be defined in the imported model. The table here summarizes the features that are translatable by SimMechanics link. Also note that detailed documentation is available for the mapping between CAD constraints and mates to SimMechanics joints. Refer to the resources section to get more information about this. After importing a CAD model with SimMechanics link, we can refine the SimMechanics model. For example, we changed the gravity orientation and also added internal mechanics such as stiffness and damping for our shock absorber joint. Note that we can also add sensor and actuator ports and connect to other models and algorithms in the SimLink environment. For example, we could connect our external force test subsystem to this model or build our own active suspension control system. In summary, we saw how to identify different CAD workflows, visualize CAD geometries, export from CAD software, import into SIM mechanics. Finally, we talked about what features are captured by SIM mechanics link. This concludes this video.